one of the early American presidents who quoted as saying, there are two certainties in life, he said, <clears throat> death and taxation. But of course, we know that things change in life. People change, don't they? You know, you can know somebody, say, 30 years ago, and perhaps not see them for a long time. And then when you see them again, sometimes you find that they're a completely different person than the person you knew. And whereas at one time you might have been glad to see them after 30 years, you might think to yourself afterwards, oh, I'm glad I've not seen them for 30 years. But people change. Things change, don't they? I can remember, you know, there was at one time in this particular country, you had traditional English food. And then I can remember they brought out things like spaghetti bolognese. My mother wouldn't eat it because she couldn't spell it. And so therefore she wouldn't have the spaghetti bolognese, but things change. At the moment in Glasgow, if you were to go to Glasgow, you could go to COP26. And they're busy talking about climate change. And of course, there's 30,000 people gathered there, all trying to change the climate, all trying to think that they know better than God and they can control the planet. Now, of course, we do have to be sensible and we do have to be good stewards of the planet. But nevertheless, friends, they can do all they want on climate change. They obviously haven't read the Bible because the climate is going to change. And one day, for what they do, for what they do to save the planet, let me tell you from God's holy word, without a shadow of a doubt, that things are going to get worse and worse and worse, and there's going to be more earthquakes and more tsunamis than ever. And let me tell you something else. One day, God is going to burn the whole thing up because it tells us that he's going to melt it with fervent heat and he's going to make a new heaven and a new earth. And so, thank God, I, I wouldn't have wasted my train ticket going to Glasgow this week, but uh, I'm sure they wouldn't take too kindly to that if they heard me say it tonight. But things change. Some things in life are welcome changes. Other changes are like party crashes because we don't like the change and the things that they bring. I think I once said to you before, whoever wanted Opal Fruits to become Starburst, whoever wanted a marathon to become a Snickers. I mean, it's terribly American, isn't it? Whoever wanted Sith, when it was Jif, Jif was much better. It seemed to give you the impetus to scrub harder, didn't it? But now it's sick. But these changes, of course, are minor inconveniences. In the 1970s, we had the decimalization of currency. And what a great uproar that was at the time. And I can remember my father complaining because instead of 12 pence in a shilling, you only got five pennies. Instead of there being 240 pennies in the pound, you only got 100 pennies. And of course, things went up and up 
and up. But of course, after 51 years now, we've got used to those changes. But there are sometimes more earth shattering changes that come into our lives. Changes that throw us off balance. Changes that disturb everything. Perhaps physical changes. Perhaps mental, emotional changes. And personal changes. Some which unsettle us very much. Sometimes our plans and our hopes can be suddenly thrown off course and put in a new direction altogether. Sometimes our health and our strength can be taken from us and we're weaker than we ever were before. Or sometimes our faith or our peace can be left reeling by changes and how they've affected us in our lives. You know the sort of changes I'm talking about. These changes where the rug is swept from underneath us, or the changes where we find our security in life. But you know, our text tonight says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that proves that there's only one person that we can go to for stability in all these changes in our life, because he is unchanging, he is immutable, he is unaltering, and we can share in his strength and solidity and security. Now, this particular text is a key verse in the whole of the book of Hebrews. The writer was writing to largely to Jewish Christians who'd come to a Christian faith, and yet many of them were going back into their old Jewish traditions and ways of life. And right at the start of the letter, the writer has to remind them about and say things about Jesus that are unchanging. Right in the first chapter, he said of the Son, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, speaking of the Son, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. And then again, speaking of the Son, in the same chapter, he said, You, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will grow old like a garment, like a cloak you will fold them up, and they will be changed, but you are the same, and your years will not fail. So right at the beginning of the letter, the writer to the Hebrews was speaking to the Jews of this unchangeable God. And yet, right in Hebrews 13, the last chapter of the letter, he reminds them again and says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the whole book is about the fact that Jesus Christ is our certainty in life. And so, if you like, chapter 1 and chapter 13, you could say, are bookends, which explain and enlarge the truth of the book all the way through. Now, the writer to the Hebrews was telling these people that everything that they trusted and placed their hope in back in the Old Testament and the things they were going back to, that Jesus 
was greater than all of them. I once did a series on the book of Hebrews, many, not here, but in my last church and the one before it. And I called it, it can only get better because that's what the book of Hebrews is all about. Because there the writer talks about the priests of Aaron, the sacrifices they brought, how Jesus was better than them, and they were all passing. He talks about the people themselves. He talks about the tabernacle and so on, and how Jesus was better than all of those things. And with this Jesus, there was something coming that was absolutely dependable. And that's why he told them in the 12th chapter, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And what he was urging his readers to do was to abandon everything else they'd had their faith in before and to solely put all their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, who never changes, but remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, there are many things I could expand this text for ages and ages with you, but you wouldn't thank me for that because you want your cup of tea in a moment. But I could expand it for ages, talking about the everlasting nature and grace and love of the Lord. But I just want to bring you three simple things very quickly that I want to draw on tonight and to show how Jesus Christ yesterday in his earthly life Today, in the way that he ministers and deals with us, is the same, and how forever, in the hope and certainty we have in the future to come, he remains the same. So, first of all, let's have a look at Jesus Christ yesterday. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verses 14, we read these words. We have seen and testify that the Father has sent the Son, the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love and he who abides in him abides in love, abides in God, and God in him. And you know, he tells us there how Jesus came and lived and dwelt in humanity. And therefore, he understands every one of us. There he felt and experienced all that we experience in our humanity. And he's just as sympathetic today to our needs in our lives, whatever they are. Because it says in the uh, book of Hebrews again, because we need to keep in Hebrews, and it says in the second chapter of that book, he says, therefore in all things, he was made like his brethren, that he might be merciful and a faithful high priest in all things pertaining to God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people, for in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted. You know, friends, we can rejoice tonight in the fact, yes, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, but friends, that when he came to earth, he was entirely human in every way. And all that we go through, all that we face, the changes, the trials, 
the difficulties, the sufferings he's experienced himself in the fullest measure. And friends, he's the same yesterday, today and forever, even in that situation. Even when we feel alone. And you know, sometimes people are terrible because they say, if you say I'm feeling lonely, they say, oh, I know how you feel. And sometimes, you know, you feel like saying, no, you don't, because you haven't a clue how I'm feeling. But you know, friends, praise the Lord tonight, we have a savior who's truly been through it. And he truly feels every emotion that you struggle with. He's the same unchanging Lord. Thank God we have a savior tonight who when he walked this earth yesterday, he was moved with compassion. And thank God we can say that he who is the same yesterday is the same today and forever because he has not changed and he's engaging with your feelings right now. Number two, Jesus is the same in his energy towards us. You know, it says in the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, and thus 25, therefore he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he lives to make intercession for them. Thank God, friends, Jesus Christ is still actively at work saving precious souls. Thank God tonight, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, even though the methods of presenting it may change, thank God tonight, that gospel remains the same today. And his energy towards us never ceases. Why? Because he's the same today. You know, Jesus made a wonderful promise to the disciples back in Matthew chapter 16 concerning the church of which we are a part. And he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. In other words, here's a sense of continuous activity. I am going to build, I will build it until it is complete. I'm going to keep working on it until it's perfect. And you know, friends, for the Christian himself, Paul was assured, he was able to assure the Christians in Philippi that he has a confidence and an absolute certainty that he who began a good work in you will complete it, hallelujah, until the day of Jesus Christ. In a few weeks' time, it'll be Advent, and we'll be thinking about Christmas and the Lord coming to earth. And then, of course, it's not that many months ago we were thinking about the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, when he ascended to the Father's right hand. But thank God, friends, when Jesus sat down at the right hand of God, he wasn't taking it easy. But thank God he's powerfully going on, interceding for men and women today. He's interceding on our behalf today to the Father. And thank God he's actually at work still today in the lives of people engaged. He's the same today. And you know, friends, that ought to encourage us because when we are evangelizing, when we are witnessing, when we're proclaiming Jesus, whether it be through street work or whether it be through one-to-one -one evangelism, whether it be preaching the gospel from the pulpit or whether it be by taking a cake round to your next door neighbor who's been ill and showing them Christian love and example. Friends, let's remember that we don't do these things in our own strength, but friends, it's got all the power and the energy of the Lord Jesus Christ behind it. 
as you go in the name of the Lord. Friends, I don't know what God's going to do in these next few weeks, months, and years. When we think of how COVID-19 has changed our world, it's changed church, it's changed the way we do some of the things in church. That's why we have a Zoom congregation tonight as well as a live congregation. And some of the changes that we have to face in the future, well, we don't know, it's so uncertain. But friends, one thing we can be sure of, Christ has not stagnated, but he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And friends, tonight, perhaps, you know, you're questioning maybe what the Lord wants you to do at a particular time in your life. Maybe you've moved house or maybe you've moved jobs and you're just wondering where God is going to have a slot for you. But friends, let me assure you, Jesus Christ will work all that out for you as we trust him day by day. Today, his energy abounds towards us. So you see, it's friends, it's wonderful to think that when he came yesterday, in that, he's still the same today and forever. And today, he's still building his church and is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And then number three, Jesus Christ, you know, he has a great loyalty towards us. You know, friends, the Bible says, let your con we read this in the verses we read tonight, let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have, for he himself, has said, I will never leave you or forsake you, so that we boldly may say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? It's quite interesting that Kevin spoke on Psalm 46 this morning. God is our refuge and strength, a very present helper in time of trouble. And he quoted that scripture that I was going to quote tonight. If God be for us, who can be against us? And friends, really, the whole message of today has been that we have a trustworthy Lord that we can depend on. As the hymn writer said, when all around my soul gives way, he still is my hope and stay. Thank God tonight we have a Christ who's made an unbreakable covenant with us, an agreement. You know, at a wedding, two people come together in covenant to love each other. And the Bible is full of covenant language. And yet, friends, the Lord Jesus Christ entered into a covenant Lord, with, with, on our behalf to be our Savior and our Lord. And thank God, he will never break that covenant. The Bible says, for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of an eternal inheritance. Friends, let me say to you, Jesus Christ will never give up on you. Hallelujah. He will not let you go. His loyalty towards us is unchangeable. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So let me just bring this together. We said that he's the same yesterday when he came yesterday, and yet remains today and forever. We've said he's the same today in the sense that he's still building his church and saving souls, and that will not change. And we've said he's the same forever because of his covenant that he's made to be our savior and our Lord and to give us eternal life. You know, friends, we live in a world where people can be plastic almost in their friendship to other people. I call them fair weather friends. They're there when everything's fine, 
that lets something go wrong and they don't want to know. But you know, thank God we've got a Jesus Christ who sticks closer than a brother. Today, he's not plastic, but today he says, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. It was Shakespeare who wrote some sonnets about love. Now, don't get me wrong, there is no love compared with the love of Christ. But this is what he says about love. And I want you to think about this love that it might warm your heart tonight. This is what Shakespeare said. Love is not love which alters when its alteration finds or bends with remover to remove. Oh no, it is an ever fixed mark that looks on tempests and is never shaken. It is the start of every wandering bark. Friends, I think that sums up really our Lord Jesus Christ. We can rely on him because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the briefness of your word tonight, but Lord, we thank you that your word is unchangeable. We thank you, Lord, that in this world of uncertainty, we have a God who remains the same. And we thank you, Lord, because you remain the same. You have the power Lord, to deal with any situation in our lives. We thank you that tonight we come to the living God. We thank you tonight that we come to the God of hope. And so, Lord, I pray that as we embark, Lord, on another week, Lord, a week of perhaps going to work, a week of perhaps doing many different chores, we pray, Lord God, that we will never forget that our God is the faithful God. We pray that, Lord, we will prove you day by day in our lives. And, Father, that our faith will be active, knowing that you have all power and authority over every situation. So, Father God, make us not only receptive to your word, but I pray that, Lord, it will find a lodging place in our heart and that, Lord God, it will become active in our daily living. In Jesus' precious name, amen. We're going to sing um, a hymn and uh, the chorus says, Yesterday, today, forever, Jesus is the same.